Well, hello there. Hope this fares better than the darn live did today. I hated that so bad. I just goofed it up. Just scrolling to read the chat. I'd get on somebody, go to somebody's channel and I couldn't get out of it and back. It's crazy. Anyway, tracks and flashbacks is getting pretty good. We're on chapter 20, almost done. Let me check. I think it's got, usually they have 22, 23. Let's see how many chapters, hang on. Cooperate, cooperate. There we go. Cooperate. Chapter, 23 chapters, and we're on chapter 20. <laughs> okay. The true soul of Scottsdale is not for the faint of heart. Imagine Beverly Hills. But instead of manicured lawns, there are carefully curated cactus ensembles, rock gardens, and sculpture accents. The backyards do contain swimming pools, but most have extensive patios that provide shade and automatic misters to spray the nipped and tucked guest with a fine spray of cool water, which evaporate as soon as it touches the skin. This is the Silicon Valley. At the entrance to the gated community, Riparian, Riparian Knowles, K-N-O-L-L-S, like hills, Eric shows his badge and mentions Detective Delgado. Unlike our previous interactions with civilians, this gate attendant is thoroughly unimpressed. Sit tight, I'll have to make a call. Eric glances at me with surprise and a small amount of admiration brightening his features. The power mad attendant returns. This de Detective Delgado said you don't have a warrant, but she did request our cooperation. I can officially give you 30 minutes inside the compound. Please check out with me at the gate when you leave, and if there's any report of trouble, I'll have you forcibly removed. He taps his hand on the driver's side door, returns to his air-conditioned booth, and the ornate metal gate rolls open. As soon as the window goes up, I blurt, does Paulson have a long-lost brother you don't know about? <laughs> Eric drives onward and chuckles under his breath. I hope nobody ever gives that guy a badge or a gun. He's on a serious power trip with nothing more than a button that controls a gate arm. <laughs> Right, he takes his job way, way too seriously. <laughs> Tapping his thumb on the steering wheel, Eric looks for the address. A positive flip side pops into my head, although it definitely means that random strangers aren't wandering in and out of this community. <clears throat> the hairs on the back of my neck tangle, but I'm not sure why. We make a left turn at Twist Flower Road and a right onto Snapdragon Lane, which becomes Snapdragon Circle. Eric parks half a block shy of the cul-de-sac. If this place is as, is as tight as it seems, there are probably already two or three people looking out of their windows at track, activating the phone tree. His comment, <coughs> His comment catches me off guard and I have to laugh before I reply. This definitely looks like the kind of neighborhood with more than one Gladys Kravitz. <laughs> Sadly, he doesn't get my bewitched reference, but he gives me a courtesy laugh. So, do you want to go talk to Tiffany and I'll see who's manning the door at Heidi's old place or vice versa? Before I answer, I have to weigh the odds. I'd prefer to do both so that my psychic senses would have the advantage of picking up a reading from Tiffany and gathering whatever details are to be had regarding the poss possibly missing Heidi. However, at this point, I think I'd rather deal with the one in the hand than whatever's possibly hiding in the hedges. 
or whatever that saying is. I'll take Tiffany, Sheriff. He puts a hand on the door and turns back. I'd wish you luck, but it seems like you make your own. When we exit the vehicle, the wall of the heat heats me. The wall of heat hits me like a pizza oven. The dry, fiery air seems impossible to inhale. I could feel the heat radiating up through the soles of my designer heels. For the first time in my life, I actually wish I were wearing a, a higher platform shoe. Yeah, shoe. I might spontaneously combust before I ever reach Tiffany's door. Taking a deep breath, I prepare to spin my tail. I ring the doorbell and a voice comes over the intercom. Thanks, but we don't need any. Please leave or I'll have to call security. I smile into the doorbell camera and wave. I'm sorry to bother you. I was looking at the home over on Twist Flower and was hoping someone could give me a little background about the neighborhood. Thank goodness I saw that for sale sign. Hopefully she'll buy what I'm selling now. The Tuscan two-story? No, it's the three-story with the four-car garage. What'd you say your name was? Right, Rose Shaggy, I forgot to prepare an identity. Guess I'll have to grab the first two names that come to mind. Oh, I didn't, darling, but it's Isadora Harper. Forgive me, Grams and Eric. I didn't have much time. The front door opens and the crease-free peaches and cream complexion of the utterly ageless Tiffany stares at me with lingering doubts. You may as well step into the foyer, but I warn you, I have the security guard on speed dial. Thank you, and that's smart. I do the same. She closes the door behind me and not so subtly re no, not re evaluates my dress and shoes. My extrasensory data confirms that she is duly impressed. She begins her interrogation. Is that a Veronica Beard? I silently thank Grams for her un, unrequested fashion lessons. It's Carolina Herrera. She has a better line for my body type. Tiffany nods and tilts her head. Do you have children? Children? Not yet. My husband and I wanted a few years on our own before we added that complication. Tiffany nods and clicks her manicured gel nails. That's wise. I started too young and it definitely cramped my style. Attempting a sympathetic nod, I ask, have you lived in the community long? I sense her struggling with her answer, but there's a small part of me that suddenly realizes it's not that she's hesitant to answer my question per se. She doesn't want to give her age away. I suppose it's been 10 or 15 years. Who can remember? Time flies. Oh, of course. Do you know any of your neighbors? Absolutely, I love them. You can't be too careful, you know what I mean? Her words continue to have a superficial sweetness, but I'm picking up a sour undercurrent. My mood ring burns with information, but I can't risk a glance. Do people come and go often, or is it a fairly stable neighborhood? Her heart rate increases. It's a very exclusive community. Once people get in, they rarely leave. And check out any time you like. But you can never leave. That's reassuring. What about divorce? It seems so difficult to maintain a healthy marriage if everyone's falling apart around you. Any of your neighbors divorced? Her heart rate briefly speeds up and then takes a striking turn. Her jaw tightens and I feel that if she could scowl, she would. Gossip is an ugly habit. I widen my eyes and hope that I'm exuding innocence. I'm so sorry. You misunderstand. I haven't been married long and not to sound like that girl, but my husband is really good looking. I want to make sure we're in a neighborhood of happily married women, if you know what I mean. Her eyes dart toward the door, and if I draw an imaginary line between that gaze and the other homes in the cul-de-sac, I'd say it's a direct hit for Heidi Falk's house. Falk. Uh, 
Everyone around here is happily married, as far as I know. As I mentioned, I'm not one to gossip. Of course, well, I appreciate the information, and I hope we get to be neighbors. I extend my hand and wait for a name. There's a knock on the door, and Tiffany stiffens. Her gaze darts toward the driver. In the hall, her gaze darts toward a drawer. What the heck does that <laughs> Driver. A drawer. In the hallway table. I don't need psychic senses to know what's in that drawer. I should probably get going. Turning, I open the door and I am unsurprised to see Eric on the other side. Time for me to leap into my cover before he blows it. Sweetie, I told you I'd meet you back at the car. Turning to Tiffany, I add, this is my husband, Eric. This lovely lady might be our new neighbor if we make an offer on that house on Twist Flower. Wink. Eric reaches a hand toward Tiffany and offers one of his knee-weakening smiles. Its power is not lost on the socialite. She smiles as best she can beneath the Botox and rifles an eager hand toward Eric's. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Harper. I'm Tiffany. Your wife is quite sweet. We'll have to have you over for cocktails once you get settled into your new place. I'm struggling not to throw a right hook at this drooling seductress, but if there was any doubt in my mind about her cross cul-de-sac indiscretions, that doubt has vanished. We better be going, sweetie. We have so many other places to see. Tiffany tightens her grip on Eric, saying, I certainly hope Riparian Knowles is on the top of your list. Eric gifts her with another grin and nods. Me too. We hurry back to the minivan, and despite throwing the air conditioning on its highest setting, there is little relief inside the hot box. What was all that smiling and flirting, Sheriff? My voice is laced with jealousy. Eric makes a U-turn on the street to avoid driving in front of Tiffany's house and heads for the gate. I was struggling to play the hand you dealt me, Moon. I had no idea I was opening that door to discover my wife, he chuckles. Well, Tiffany is a lecherous shrew, and she absolutely had or is still having an affair with Heidi's husband. My arms are crossed, and my bottom lip may be having a little pout. Would it be so bad to have a wife like me? His face blushes with a hint of pink. A wife like you or you for a wife? Now it's my turn to squirm with discomfort. Never mind. What about Tiffany and the affair with Heidi's husband? I'd say it's still going on. A maid answered the door at the Falk residence. Once I flashed my badge, she spilled her guts. Heidi did not return home from Australia, and the woman also claimed no letters or postcards have arrived from overseas. She mentioned a lot of special visits from concerned neighbors, but none more than Tiffany. He stops the minivan at the exit. The gate fascist <laughs> approaches the vehicle and signals for Eric to put down his window. That was a one-time thing, he warns. Eric nods, thanks for your cooperation. The man scowls and returns to his post booth. The large iron gate rolls back at a snail's pace and we leave the community. Something's definitely going on with Tiffany. She keeps a gun in the drawer of her hall table and she got real skittish when I asked about her neighbors. Maybe you can try to find this missing Heidi? No, it's not a question. It's a statement. I tilt my head, what do you mean? Sometimes you seem to get hunches about where people might be. I don't know how you do it, and it's not like you're sharing the details, but maybe you can get a hunch about Heidi. My thoughts go to the pendulum in my backpack, and I wonder if I have courage to use it in front of Eric. Maybe I can send him on some kind of errand, plus I only know how to use it with a map of the area I intend to search. If she could be anywhere in the world, how could I possibly get a map that big? Maybe. Eric suggests a fancy lunch somewhere. We're already dressed up, but my stomach is churning with too many questions. Actually, I was hoping you could drop me off at the motel and grab takeout from somewhere. Kind of have a lot on my mind right now. 
He nods, of course, whatever you need. We swing by the motel. He sees me safely into the room and promises to return with something amazing. As soon as I leave, as soon as he leaves, I call Silas. Good afternoon, Mr. Willoughby. I've run into some trouble and I'm hoping you have a solution. Never one to cut corners, Silas returns my pleasantries and brings me up to speed on the happenings in Pincherry Harbor. This, of course, takes less than 15 seconds since there really isn't anything happening in Pincherry. Once we've laid all that to rest, he's willing to hear my request. I need to locate someone. I have the pendulum and I understand that I have to be very specific with my question. The problem is she could be anywhere in the world. He mentions that anyone he mentions that anyone could be anywhere in the world, but using something called OCAM's razor, he instructs me to begin with the simplest solution. Well, the simplest solution would be that she never left Scottsdale. He wholeheartedly agrees with me. So are you saying she maybe bought herself a new identity? Maybe she's right here under their noses? He indicates that a number of options are play, are at play, but that my best bet would be to start with a map of the local area and expand my search if necessary. Thanks, Silas. I do always appreciate your calm, rational advice. Ending the call, I dial Eric to add a quick item to his food run. To his credit, he doesn't ask me a bunch of questions about why I need a map of the Phoenix metro area as well as a map of Arizona. He simply agrees to get them for me. I'm starting to believe, I'm starting to think this man is an angel falling straight from heaven. And that is all of 20. Nighty night or good day. Love y'all. Be sweet. Don't be ugly.